So I'm recording the cloud. So that's recording now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, just talking about the sixth grade day. So as you probably know, we have a team structure in the sixth grade. Uh, the, the, the students have two teachers for four subjects in their core areas. So they have a teacher for, e for ELA and social studies. They have a teacher for math and science. And then um, those core classes are mainly all close to each other in the same hallway. So when they travel from class to class, that is a new change, obviously from fifth grade. And that's something that they are getting used to. Um, but in the sixth grade wing, those classes are all fairly close to each other. So a lot of the time they only have to go across the hall for you know English from math or something like that. Um, they do have other classes like gym, art, music, technology. They have lunch down, you know, all the way down the other side of the building. So those, those classes are in other areas of the building that they do have to travel around to, but their core classes are nearby, um, mainly in one section. Um, we wanted to show a, a sample schedule so that you can get an idea of what that structure looks like. And we talk about the academic block as well. So this is just an example, um, but you know, they would have students would have maybe science, social studies in the morning, um, some unified arts classes, an alternation, an alternating of something like music with PE, maybe something else depending on what they play or what they're what music they're in. Um, everybody eats lunch together, fifth period. So all the sixth grade is in lunch at the same time. And then they would have a sixth period class. And this is our academic block. So we wanted to just talk a little bit about what that what that looks like and what it means. Basically, it's ELA and math, two subjects spread out over three periods. So they have general essentially a period and a half of ELA and then a period and a half of math. So it's just a little bit of an extra time built in for those for those subjects. And it's not necessarily at the end of their day, it might be in the morning, it might be in the middle of the day. Okay, so being new to middle school um, brings a lot of changes. It brings a lot of new responsibilities and a lot of new structure to their school day, maybe to your day at home, you know, as a family. Um, students need to be organizing their work for lots of different classes. They don't have the same teacher all day like they, you know, like they did in, in fifth grade. Um, we always recommend, and not everybody uses this, but the, one of the best things that we suggest is for students to use a planner or some kind of a calendar so that they can keep track of what's due for what class and when. Um, if they're coming home and feeling totally overwhelmed by all these different classes and all these different things they need to remember, if they're not using a planner, that's suggestion number one. That's always suggestion number one. So, you know, set up, setting up a space at home where they can be organized and just have like a, maybe a calendar in front of, you know, tacked up on a board or just a planner book that they can use is really the best thing that they can do to get themselves organized because it is a lot and they do have to, you know, take a minute at the end of class to jot down homework or things like that. And if they're trying to remember everything for eight different teachers, it's a lot and it's overwhelming. Um, another thing that we suggest in middle school is that students can start practicing doing their own communicating with their teachers or other school staff, me or, you know, their AP or whoever, um, because it's just a really good way for them to practice that it's a it's a good life skill that they need to learn how to do. So now is the time to maybe shift if it's like, you know, um, oh, I, I can't remember what, you know, Mrs. Smith said we were supposed to do for homework tonight. Our, sometimes our instinct is to say, okay, let me email her for you and find out, right? We all do that. Um, so this is a time to start saying, let's sit down and you write an email to Mrs. Smith and I'll help you word it, but it comes from you to her. And then that communication is between them. Um, it takes one thing off of your plate too. <laughs> and then it's, it's really good for them to get in the habit of doing that. The teachers always really appreciate that too, when, when students are stepping up and starting to communicate that way um, and kind of take their own ownership of their classwork and, and advocate for themselves. Um, I'm going to skip the middle for a second because we're, we're going to talk about communication because you're going to talk about that a little bit, right? Communication. And I'll just go to the bottom. So cell phones during the day, if you have not already heard this, the, the rule for school with cell phones is that they do turn them off and put them in their locker for the day. So that comes into play with the middle bubble a little bit, sometimes communicating, you know, if you need to communicate with your child during the day, if you if you send them a text, they're hopefully not going to get it because they should have their phone off and in their locker. Um, so sometimes with just dismissal plans and things like that, it gets a little tricky. If you have a last minute change or something, you know, they don't have their phone. They shouldn't have their phone with them to be able to receive that communication during the day. Um, they, they, they can 
you, you come to the office to make a phone call if they really have to, if it's an, you know, if, if their dismissal plan is uncertain or they're, you know, asking you if they can do something different at the end of the day. Um, but talking about dismissal plans and talking about kind of a, a general plan for your household and your family is also something that may be changing in middle school and maybe slightly more complex. Um, we have clubs after school. They have, you know, intramurals, they might play um, sports. Sometimes they're meeting new friends. Um, they're, you know, making plans to hang out with friends after school and things like that. So having a plan um, that you would talk about at home and then communicate that either the night before school or in the morning before they leave is really important so that they know what they're doing after school. Um, do you wanna talk about dismissal for a minute? Okay, Ms. Grimace is gonna just talk about that too. For a minute. Hi everyone, um, thank you for coming in person and also um, online. Um, so dismissal plan in sixth grade, students begin to really feel empowered. So they really begin to feel like they know what they're doing, they can, you know, stay after school if they want and it, and they're safe they know they're safe in the building so that you know because of that they might forget to communicate with you so you'll be waiting at the regular you know bus stop for your child and your child will not uh be on that will get will not get off the bus then you'll drive to the middle school this has happened this year actually you'll drive to the middle school because your child's not replying to the text message because they're in a club and they're having a lot of fun and they're safe um and you're then beginning to feel like, oh my goodness, what's going on is my, what, could, what happened to my child? Um, so they are safe, they are in the building, but if, you, if, if the deal that you make with your child is you can't stay after school unless we've communicated. Um, if you do stay after school, you know, there, we keep the key here if, if your child doesn't carry a key. Um, if you don't make contact with me, you can't stay. Sorry, but you can't stay. The club will be around next month. It's not a problem, right? Ch child might forget that, but you know that to be true. Um, your, your comfort in your child's safety it is a big deal. And it, I mean, I've seen parents come at the end of the school day, really just very concerned about their child, yet their child's here safe, but they hadn't, um, either they broke the deal or um, they didn't have a plan. So we do ask families to just make sure that you communicate as many different scenarios with your child as possible. Most importantly saying, if we don't communicate, that means you can't stay if that's your family choice. Um, so that's that's it for us on that one. Um, the cell phones sometimes don't work. Your, your child may not be able to use like a 914 um, cell phone number on our on our school phone. So they can always come to the office. There's an administrator in the building every day, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, actually, and Monday and Tuesday um, in the office that they can then come and use the phone in the office if they need to. So please just make a plan and we're here to support. Thank you. And also, I'll just add that um, if you do have an, you know, an emergency, the, the best thing to do is to call the main office um, because emails, you know, while, even though we're all on with our laptops most of the time, we don't always get an email immediately. So, you know, some, somebody emailed me a couple of weeks ago with a, a last minute, you know, kind of urgent change. And I was in three back-to-back -back meetings. So I didn't look at my email until an hour later, you know, so things like that. So if you really have something that has to get communicated right away, um, you can call the main office and, and they can help. Um, okay. So the sixth grade day might, cause a lot of um, new feelings for, you know, for middle school students. It's a lot for them to get used to. I have uh, twins myself who are also in sixth grade this year. So we're, we're seeing that in my house too. You know, everything is, it's, it's overwhelming and it's tired. It's a long day and it's tiring. Um, so they're doing a lot of things. They are managing supplies, notebooks, binders, et cetera, for eight different classes. Um, they're managing trips to their locker at certain times of the day because those are designated to before school, before and after lunch, and then at the end of the day. So they do have to stop and think like, okay, four periods, what do I need? Then I'll get this after lunch, et cetera. Um, and then sometimes, you know, getting to class on time is challenging as well. If they have to go from lunch to their locker and then back to the other side of the building, you know, it's, it's, it can be a little bit hectic for them. So they're navigating the hallways, they're navigating that, um, the whole sixth grade eats lunch together. So, you know, it's a larger lunch crowd than they may be used to. Um, they're keeping track of expectations from eight different teachers and eight different classes. 
there is a row, we have a rotating schedule. So there's um, day one through four. And even that just takes a minute in the morning to say, okay, what day is it? What do I have today? You know, what do I have to do? Um, and then their friend groups might be changing as well. We've been seeing a lot of that in the last two weeks. So it's, you know, three elementary schools merging into one large school and things change. And, you know, sometimes that's difficult. Um, so all of this can lead to some overwhelm. We've, we've certainly seen that. Um, some, some kids handle it fine and, and some are overwhelmed. Sometimes you will find, and I would say this is more, more common even than sometimes, um, kids will manage fine in school. And then when they come home to their safe place, which is home and you, they melt down. And, and, you know, you might talk to teachers and the teachers say, oh, it's, they're fine. No, we've never seen that at all. And you're thinking, why is this happening at home? You know, and they're, they're completely coming unraveled when they get home. Um, and that's really common. It happens a lot. If that's something that you're finding at home and you're, it's creating, you know, some stress for you and your own household, please reach out to me for support. Um, we can always, talk to students about how they're feeling. They are welcome to come check in with me. Some students I can see regularly if they, if they would like to. You know, I have already a handful of students that are scheduled with weekly check-ins with me. And sometimes it just helps to, for the, for the student to just feel like, okay, I know every Friday I can go to Mrs. Burns and I can just unload <laughs> the, the mental overwhelm. And then, and then it helps, you know, and they can of course do that at home with you too, but sometimes having that little check-in in school also, you know, is helpful. So that leads us into my role as the school counselor. Um, so obviously I'm here for lots of different types of support. Um, I can support with academics. If your child is you know, having a hard time staying organized with all the different work, um, if they're overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that they need to do for different classes, um, if they are, if they need to accelerate, that's another, you know, it's not just the struggles, it's the, it's the opposite of that too. So if you are, um, if you're sitting in a sixth grade Spanish class and you're like, wow, I really, I know all of this content, you know, then that's somebody that I'm somebody that they can come to for questions about that. You know, can I, can I go to seventh grade Spanish or something, you know, things like that. Um, so we, we want to be there to support students when they're struggling with academics, but then also if they need something more like a challenge or some kind of differentiation, um, you can let me know and we can work with the teachers on that as well. Um, social support, behavioral, emotional, so anything that's going on with friends, all of that friend groups, you know, changing stuff that I was talking about a minute ago, that's definitely something that I'm here to support students with. Um, and then if, you know, something is going on at home, if there's, you know, some nervousness, some anxiety, anything like that, that you're seeing at home, even if it's new, um, if it's, if it's not new, if it is new, you can talk to me about that. And I can support the students with those things. Um, I'm just, I skipped down to the bottom there. So I'm going to go back up to the top. So I'm going to be starting some small groups um, fairly soon. So this, these groups are going to focus just on, you know, relationship building, uh, the students getting to know each other in those little small groups, them getting to know me, me getting to know them. Um, we're going to run just some Q&A for them. So it'll be a place where they can just ask me questions, anything that they haven't been able to get an answer to in the last few weeks. Um, just getting to know me as their counselor and then also where and how they can access help. So I kind of go through some scenarios with the kids and say, okay, if you had this issue, who would you, you know, where would you go? Who would you ask? If you had this issue, issue what would you do? Um, we take a little walk around the building too, just to kind of in the front, just to show them like main points that they should know where my office is, where uh, Ms. Bermis is located, where they, you know, they, sh they probably know all these things already, but some kids don't, or they might've missed it somewhere and they don't want to ask. So we kind of just go through a little bit more, you know, of an overview of that kind of stuff and where, for where they can get information from. Um, I always say to the students, and I say this to parents as well, I'm really just a point person for you. So I might not be able to answer your question. If you have a question that you don't know where to go with, just ask me and the kids can do the same thing. And if I can't answer it for you or take care of it for you, I can point you in the right direction or connect you with the person that you need to be connected to. Um, Ms. Bermisa and I meet with the teams of teachers every week. So we talk about student support, talk about their progress, talk about students' needs. Um, and then the teachers are also available during those team meeting times to meet with you if you want to get 
just an overview, an update, an overview of how they're doing. If you have an issue or you're seeing an issue with a particular class um, or a struggle or something like that. So you can either contact me or you can contact the, um, the, team, the team teachers to set that up. And then we have those all the time as well. Um, let's see, okay, so the website. Okay, so I'm gonna pass it over to Ms. Vermees for some website info. Okay, so um, coming to arriving at the middle school being new as a parent, um, there is a lot of information that's being shared. A lot of it's verbal, but everything's written down. So uh, we wanted to just take a few minutes to go through the website so that you can see where to find this information so that you have an idea of, you know, when you're sitting at home wondering a question that you have an easier way of finding it. So we're just going to take a minute to go through each one of these items here. And I have them uh, on a list separate as well to help me. Okay, so this is the John Jay Middle School website. If you just Google JJMS, uh, Katona Lewisboro School District, it will come up. Um, so we're gonna go to the calendar first, okay? So we're actually in John Jay Middle School right now. Maybe some of you have already used this already, but um, hopefully this might be helpful to you. Here's just the upcoming uh, calendar here. These are our school events, and a lot of the district events also get pushed onto this calendar. But you know, it's it's hard to see this way. But if you go into this tiny corner here, you'll see this little calendar. If you click on that, it opens up to the entire calendar month by month. So you can skip ahead. So just in considering planning with your child, like what clubs are coming up, that information is all here on our on our um, website. Um, in addition, you'll see this. Let's just take a look at today. There are two items here and the area is not large enough. So if you click four more, there are, they'll list out all of the other events that are taking place. I will say um, if an event gets canceled, which happens, we, we do sometimes end up having to cancel an event midday. We do have a live board that's uh, for the students. So if that was the case, going back to that planning with your student, if an event gets canceled midday and your child doesn't have an opportunity to communicate with you, what do you want your child to do? Do you want them to stay for something else? Or do you want them to come home? You may not be home, you may need them to stay, in which case they can stay, they can go to the cafeteria and sit there and wait, they can do their homework there. But that would be something that you wanna communicate. If something gets canceled, um, I still want you to stay in school. Or if we contact, if we make contact, it's okay to come home. But again, that, that could happen um, if activities do get canceled, especially like walking club, for example. Like it was raining the other day. I don't think anyone would, would have wanted to go walking. So that club would have been canceled. Um, so that is just taking a look at the calendar. If you click on this JJ, uh, John Jay Middle School, you can always get back home, which is very helpful. Um, so let me just take a look at the next. Okay, so the next item is, is the handbook, okay? So within school and back at the John Jay Middle School calendar, within school information, you'll see the ABC handbook. This handbook is really helpful. It has all of the information of our processes in it. Um, and just skipping the first page, if you go to the table of contents, it actually, they're hyperlinked, which makes it super convenient. So if you wanted to take a look at the bell schedule, you can just click on that and the bell schedule gets pulled up. So um, again, another just important, helpful resource. Up oh, for you. Trying to get back to the website. Does this move? Sorry about that. Okay, so the next item, which is very popular, we do really promote our clubs. So if you go to athletics and clubs, you'll see our here, our 22-23 club brochure. So if you just scroll down, it gives you some information on what the clubs are and when they meet. You can click down and learn more. Um, a lot of them have Schoology pages. And you're welcome to sign in and sign up for a Schoology page. 
If you, a lot of them are show up clubs. That, that's the whole purpose of middle school. We want kids to investigate and try many different things. So we don't, um, we don't make things mandatory. If you go once, you have to go the rest of the year. There, is some, there are some commitment clubs, you know, like theater, because they have to learn their lines and be ready to present. But there are other clubs like art clubs that the activities are just within that uh, time frame so that you'll finish the activity or maybe you'll take a little bit home. But the idea is that try it out. Um, so we also have space for your child to create a club which is always very exciting. So, and we have, we've had some really interesting clubs come along across the years. So if your child is interested, they don't see a club that they're really passionate about, but they wanna start a club, they are welcome to come see the administrator and come see me. Um, what I would probably do is send them to Catherine Graybosch, who's the other assistant principal. She manages our after school clubs. Um, and in that way, then they'll find out all of the practices in order to get a, a club started. Debate Club is an example of a club that a sixth grader started last year, and that club is up and running and it continues this year. Sometimes they end, but um, the Debate Club is, is alive and growing, which is wonderful. Um, going back to the dismissal form. So the dismissal, um, we're talking about dismissal. Um, after school activities and staying after school is really a, a very big deal. We want kids to stay and you know, the, the important piece will be then communication with you. So we do have the form that we have families fill out in order for a child to walk, which means they literally walk out of the facility. They can walk up to the high school, they can walk to the plaza. If your child walks off campus, when they come, they cannot come back and ride a school bus. So if they, if you choose to have your child walk off or get picked up, they, they can do so, but they cannot come back and get on a school bus um, for an activity. So if extra help, for example, ends at uh, 325, they then go into the dining room and wait for the 415 bus unless they get picked up. If a child gets picked up after normal dismissal time, they do not need a note. But if they get picked up during regular dismissal time, they do need a pickup note. So that form is here yeah, under students and parents. Um, we do ask that you fill that out by 1 p.m. so that we can ensure that your child has a pass and it's all organized. Um, that's, that's something, again, in planning, if your child wants to reach out to you because they realize there's a club at lunchtime, they can use the phone that's in the dining room. They don't need to text or they can come to the office and dial you to ask if they can stay. That's before one o'clock, in which case then you'd fill out the form and then we're all, we're all set. Um, so the information is here. This also goes for a child riding a different bus. If, you, if your child decides at the last minute, let's say they're a permanent walker, you've written a permanent pass and they walk uh, every day, but on, I don't know, Thursday, you've decided that you want your child to take the regu their regular bus home. They do not need a note for that. They can just get on their regular bus at any time. What they can't do is get on somebody else's bus. They need permission and a note for that. And that note needs to be presented to the bus driver. Again, you know, this is all about your child's safety and communication between us, between you, between the two, the, you and your child. So um, just uh, please go back and take a look either in the family handbook, which has that all laid out and written out for your, for your support. Um, contact information actually. So there is this, under school information, there is faculty and staff directory. So if you wanted to just see who the administrators are, we pop up, if you click that, all of the teachers are listed, as well as if you were interested in reaching out to any of the staff who actually some of them run clubs. So that might be why you might wanna reach out to one of our staff members. Uh, and then finally, we wanted to talk a little bit about Schoology. So let me get this out of the way. Um, Schoology is a, another, another communication tool, something that the teachers are using. They, they use it in different ways. So you'll, uh, you'll learn to see how each teacher does use Schoology. But in general, Schoology, um, just a tutorial, I watched it and it's actually really helpful. If you go into the more section of our website under technology and click on Schoology, 
and scroll down. This video here, this enhanced parent access, really gives you a handle and an understanding of how Schoology uh, can be used. There's a parent tab, but you can go in as your child and it'll clearly state up top that, you are, that you're looking at your child's view so that you can see your view and then you can also see your child's view. You can get alerts, so that's something that you can set up. It's pretty individualized, so I'm not gonna go through it all today, but watching the video is incredibly helpful. And if after you watch the video, you still have questions, you can reach out to our technology department that can answer those that would be more specific to your needs. Uh, so that is, that's what I have as far as the website. The website is really incredibly helpful and handy. It's just, to, to be honest, when you look at it, you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much here. It's really about figuring out where things are. So I hope this helped. Thanks. Oh, yes, I did. I actually own the next slide. Sorry about that. How would I get back to the slide? So my technology skills are not wonderful. Which one? Yes. Six nine. Yeah. Yeah, and then just the space bar. Oh, okay. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So our our team building at SCL lessons. Uh, the sixth graders already participated and went on a trip to our um, BOCES. Um, environmental center and they had an opportunity to play games with each other that did breed uh, a little bit of struggle, communication, um, working together. And the teachers, myself and Katie, really had a, a nice opportunity to walk around and really see the kids in action working with their, um, their, their classroom partners. So they were grouped into about kids, uh, groups of maybe 12 to 14. And those are kids that were in their classroom. So it's, um, it was a nice opportunity for them to get to know each other, to see how to work together, to also learn you know, different ways to communicate. Um, and that's ongoing this year. So our two psychologists over the summer created some SEL lessons that were based in the New York State and Castle standards. And um, Katie and I actually at a team meeting the other day had an opportunity to go through one of those um, lessons that will be taking place within the end of this month and the beginning of next month, will, uh, which was just about strengths. So um, there, it was a fun activity. Your children will be participating in it and really learning what their strengths are and considering what their strengths are uh, using a bingo card and then communicating with their peers, talking about what strengths that they had. And then there's a little uh, piece also about what they might want to develop further as their strength which is their choice. So that lesson then would lead into other activities that the classroom teachers can do related to uh, social, emotional, and, and um, just community and, and partnership. Um, the next lesson will happen probably in about February, and that's goal setting, which is an appropriate time right after the new year, everybody's setting goals. So um, that will take place then. And then we have one other activity that take, takes place at the end of the year that would probably be an entire grade activity. Um, and that way, because as they're getting ready to go into seventh grade, they know the kids on their team very well. They might know kids from clubs that they attend, but now this would be um, more and also a lunch and recess, but this would be another way for them to mix and mingle among each other at the end of the year. So these SEL lessons are new. Um, we will probably put out something to the family so that you know that they're happening so that maybe you can talk to your child about how they went and hopefully you'll get more than, yeah, it was good mom or dad. It was great. Thanks. Yeah. Want to talk about it a little bit more? No, no, I'm good. Um, hopefully you'll get a little more than that, but at least that you'll have the information that we did, um, they did engage in the activity um, because something, I mean, it certainly bred a lot of conversations for the adults who went through it um, ourselves. And which, that's a wonderful thing. We're all gonna be going through them ourselves so that we can tweak them and see um, how they might benefit the students and uh, also then get feedback afterwards. Um, so that's a new engagement this year and we're excited about it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna be speaking about the health office for a moment. So as you know, um, we needed to have all, the, all of the medications in, 
um, all of the inhalers. Kids can um, walk around with these inhalers or Benadryl as long as there's communication with the nurse and the parent is okay with that. Um, we also have another uh, uh, shot that is upcoming. It's called the Tdap shot. Many of your children have, have already gotten it. Um, if by some chance you have not, your child has not gotten it, you'll have received a letter probably today or tomorrow or Friday. No, tomorrow's Friday. Saturday or Monday. <laughs> sorry, um, that will just let you know that by a certain date in October, I wanna say it's October 24th, um, thank you, your child will not be able to attend school. So I will be following up with um, the, after the letter with a phone call, um, just we're very serious about that. So just please make sure that if your child hasn't had the shot that they get the shot. Um, and your child may be participating the following year when they're seventh graders in um, some in other, other sports activities. So just please make sure um, we take medical records and, and shots and um, documentation of, of inhalers and all of that very seriously. As your kids are growing and changing um, it, at this age at a rapid rate, we just have to make sure that we have everything on file and present in the building so that if something were to happen, that we would be available and ready to provide the support that your child needs. Okay, so Katie's up, thank you. So, so that's all of our presented information. So we, we thought we could leave a little time for questions and answers, and um, we just wanted to put our contact information up here as well. So Monica's email and my email, um, and to thank everybody for being here and just, you know, please reach out to us if there's anything at all that you need. Any questions, any concerns, and maybe we could take questions. Yeah. Okay, so the question was, can a child after a club, can they just walk off campus? So there is no, we don't have a practice of written notes after school hours. That would have been going back, I know I keep saying this, but like a communication plan with the family. So they can walk off campus after. Um, you don't have to fill out a form for that. In fact, if it's it's it probably wouldn't be seen, especially if it was like a last minute thing. Um, but please know that if your child does go to extra help and it ends at 325 and they want to walk to the plaza to go get Dunkin' Donuts, they can't come back to school then to get on a school bus. Once they walk off, they are they're off. Can they come back to the front of the building to get picked up? It's preferably not. So if they walk to the plaza, that's really where they should stay and get picked up at the plaza. And thank you for your question. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so it, the question was, if, if it's after school hours, so after extra help ends, your child is, can walk off, they can get picked up, they can get in an, a, a prearranged with you. I mean, again, going back to your plan, a neighbor's car um, after school hours, yes, that, that can happen. They cannot get on somebody else's bus without a note. So if the plan would be that they're getting on somebody else's bus, regardless of the time, that's tra transportation needs a note documenting that. Sorry, uh, just on the same topic. Sure. If the kid leaves right after the school, uh, after the school, sort of goes to the plaza, can they then get on a bus or not? So if a child leaves campus, they cannot come back and get on a school bus. Yeah, thank you. So the question, okay, no. So if I, if I, if you write a walking, if you write a note to walk off campus 
and your child walks off campus with that note, they cannot come back then and get on a school bus. Once they walk off campus, they can no longer get on a school bus. Okay. So really they're under our care. So if they leave and something happens to them and you expect them to get on a bus to return, it, we can't manage that. So once they walk off, the decision is made that they're going to get picked up however you decide as a family that they'll get picked up. The plaza is not our um, domain. Yeah. But there is a place for your child to stay after school. If they stay for extra help, they can go into the dining room and they can um, hang out with their friends or do homework until the bus comes. The school day ends at 2.48. Two, uh, okay, so uh, the school day ends at 2.48. Clubs end at various times. So when you go onto the website, you can see under the clubs tab, the different times that the clubs end. All clubs end at different times. Some clubs end at five, right? So you really you wanna check to see what time the club ends and it would, it would be stated on the, on the website in the clubs tab, okay? Extra help ends at 325. And we do encourage kids that if they go to extra help, they can then go to a club. They can show up to a club late in order to like fill their time if they don't want to sit in the dining room. Okay, so the question is, what is our uh, personal opinion about having sixth graders go to the plaza? So I'm overprotective. <laughs> so my personal opinion is, I think that it, it's a privilege for your child and it should be earned. We have so many clubs and activities where your child is in a safe environment and we then give them access to a bus to ride home. There are so many things that your child can do um, you can provide them with extra snacks so they have something fun um, to have even in the dining room after extra help. Um, I would say if you do choose as sixth grade parents to have your kids go to the plaza, you might have them earn it at home. So it's not just an automatic, but it's let's see how responsible you are at home with certain things that you're now giving them as um, things for them to do as they get older. Um, and then they can potentially earn it. I mean, but again, this is my personal opinion. Uh, I know there's a lot of peer pressure about the plaza. Um, I also know from feedback last year that the plaza is not always the best place for kids to go because it's a bit unruly. There are no staff managing it. That's not our property. It's off school property. So um, there are cars, there are high school drivers driving there. So, um, you know, again, that's my, per that's my personal. Um, so, yeah. Well, and, and I can just interject, I can just, I mean, I agree. I personally kind of agree. I mean, would I send my sixth grade twins, you know, to, we don't have a plaza by me, but if I had to make that choice, I'd be nervous, you know, about it too. But I would say just now is the time to have those conversations about um, if you do go to the plaza, like here are some things that could come up. What were you, what, what are you going to do if, blah, blah, blah. And what are you going to do if blah, blah, blah happens, you know? Um, so the proactive approach to the, to the plaza or, you know, whatever other situation is, is something that I would just suggest to throw out there too, you know? So that now is a good time to start having those conversations about shifting a little bit more towards their independence. And so with independence comes your responsibility and you have to have your head on your shoulders to know how to handle things if they, you know, if they happen. So it's a good time to kind of use that conversation. Questions? Wait, are there? Yes. Sure. Reset. Well, so recess after school clubs, yes, right? I mean, there's, yeah, it would be all. 
Oh, didn't hear the question. I'm sorry. The question was, um, are the grade levels mixed for clubs and also recess? So clubs, yes, because it would be the clubs are open to all three grades. Um, recess, though, no, right? Because the yeah, because the lunches are all by grade level. So the lunch, the sixth grade, sixth graders all eat lunch at the same time. They go outside or do whatever they're doing for recess, just with their grade. Yeah. Are there Zoom questions too that I'm not seeing anybody in the chat? No. Okay. Oh, seven so comments in the chat. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, you're managing that. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Oh, right, 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 right. What is this mysterious plaza that we're talking about? Um, anybody else have questions? All right. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Very sorry about our technical difficulty yeah. in the beginning. Um, please feel free to reach out to Katie or myself uh, with any more specific questions about your child. And we look forward to you having a really wonderful year. All right. Thanks so thank much. You. Take care. Thanks for coming. What?